Hey everyone, this is Mr. Mott. We're going to do is uh, go over how to calculate something called the heat diffusion of ice and um, related to some of the things that we've been talking about with, uh, with heat. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out and we're going to draw a phase change diagram for, uh, for water. Okay, I've got temperature on the y-axis and I've got heat on the x-axis. Okay. And for water, our phase change diagram is going to look something like this, where we have a solid, liquid, gas on the angle parts, and then a solid plus liquid uh, in the flat part there, and a liquid plus gas here. And of course, for water, water starts to melt and, uh, or water starts to freeze and ice starts to melt at zero degrees. So this would be zero degrees here. And going across the temperature which water boils, this would be 100 degrees. These are in Celsius. Okay. Now, the heat formula that we've used in the past um, to be able to calculate uh, heat was Q equals M times C times delta T. Remembering delta T is your change in temperature. So um, what I want to know is um, how much energy it takes to be able to melt uh, some ice. And so we want to recognize that melting ice is in this uh, first flat section. And if we note from our start on the left, the temperature is zero degrees and to the, and all the way at the end, it's zero degrees. So if we had a piece of ice that um, that we were wanting to melt as we got to at, as we degrees, and then it would continue to melt as we went across this way. All right. And so what we notice during that point is that the te the temperature change, the delta T, would be zero. And so zero times any numbers that we have, even times the mass and the specific heat, would give me a zero for heat. And we know that's not true, that it takes zero heat to be able to melt something. You need heat. So there must be different going on, and that's what we're going to investigate in the lab. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to kind of describe the lab and give you some data that was collected. And so in the lab, what we did was that we had a cup. All right, we got the mass of the cup. All right, and the mass was 4.49 grams. Um, and then we put some in it. Oh, I'm sorry, water in it. Okay, so we put some hot water in here. And then we took the mass again. So the mass of our, we had our mass plus water. Okay, plus the hot water, and this group added 100 grams, so the total mass was 104.49 grams. Okay. Then what we did is that we took some ice, we threw a bunch of ice in there. Um, actually, before we did that, we took the temperature of it. So we had a thermometer in there, and we had the, um, we had the uh, temperature of the hot water, which is, in essence, our initial temperature. And uh, that was 62 degrees Celsius. Okay, so once we got that temperature, we started immediately adding some ice. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to lower the temperature of the water uh, because we were melting the ice. And we were trying to get our temperature down to, to about 2 degrees. And so their final temperature was 3 degrees. Okay. And, um, and so what we saw because of the because of the um, melted ice, which turned into water, the, the total amount of water that was in there increased. Okay, uh, And then we took the, the final mass. Okay, So we had a, our, uh, our mass total, or our final mass, and that was equal to 104.14 grams. Okay. So that's all the data that we needed for this particular lab. And what we're going to do is go through the calculations. So we wanted to figure out first how much heat was absorbed by the water. 
And so if you haven't done so, you want to jot down uh, these numbers because we're going to be using have to scroll down. So the first thing we wanted to figure out was how much heat was absorbed by the water. So we figured out, I'm sorry, it was actually the heat that was released. And so that mass was, so we had to go MC delta T. And so the mass of the, of the water was 100 grams. The specific heat was 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature, okay, remember was T final minus T initial, which was 3 degrees minus 62. Okay, and then just as a reminder, where did I get that 100? It came from subtracting the mass of the cup plus the hot water and the mass of the, okay. So that calculated out equaled negative 4662 joules. And it's a negative because heat was released. Now, the second part of this, okay, in terms of our steps was to, if the, what we're saying is that if the heat that was, uh, the Q that is absorbed by one substance is going to be equal to the negative of the heat that is released by another substance. So with that in mind, if the hot water released negative 24662, 24,662 joules, that means that the ice absorbed that same amount. So we know that the Q absorbed for the ice is a positive 24,662 joules, okay? And finally, um, what are we going to do with this information? Well, we know that um, in order to calculate the delta heat of fusion of ice, we take how many, uh, how much energy was absorbed and we need to know how much ice we actually put in, in grams. And so going back that we drew up here, the mass of the uh, cup and the hot water was 104.49. But the total mass, the total mass was 174. So we're going to subtract those two. To know how much, um, how much ice was actually here, which is, uh, I want to know how much this. So what we're going to do, we would take 174.14. Uh, I'm not sure if I can fit this. 74.14 minus 4.49. And when we do that, 69.65 grams. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to use that down here. All right, give me one second here. There we got it. Okay, ignore that line on the top. So when we calculate our delta heat of fusion, then um, crunch the numbers here. What number? We get 354 joule. So what this number means is that we need 354 joules of energy to melt one gram ice. Now we typically don't put the one on the bottom because it's uh, understood, uh, but that's what that number means. Then we can look at then we can look at um, what would be our percent difference to the accepted value. Okay, and so um, this is just a little bit of an extension when you're doing your percent difference. You're going to take um, the experimental value minus your accepted value, an absolute value, so it's always a positive number, over your accepted value times 100. 
So in this case, calculating this out, the experimental 154, the accepted value was 334. Okay, let's scoot this down a little bit, move this over. Okay, so our percent different, and then so, okay, and then we got to go with our accepted on the bottom times 100. And working this out, the percent difference was about 6% compared to the accepted value. Not too shabby. Okay. Now, uh, that last part was lied, but an important idea. Um, so what does this, all this matter? What are we getting at? Well, going back all the way to the top now, when we are trying to calculate um, energy it takes to melt ice in this flat part of our graph, we cannot use our Q equals MC delta T formula. We can use that when we have a change in temperature, when you only have a solid, only have a liquid, or only have a gas. However, we cannot use it in the flat parts because we have no change in temperature. In those sections, what we are going to be using is a different formula. In this formula, in this part, we're going to take Q times M delta heat of fusion, and that's what we just calculated. And for uh, and for uh, the delta heat of fusion of ice, it's going to be 334 joules per gram. Okay. When we're doing this for um, for boiling from here to here, um, this would be Q equals M times the delta heat of vaporization. And so we've got some other videos that kind of go through the reasoning uh, or how to do some of these calculations, but that's the reasoning behind the new formula. In essence, what happens is... Um, in a phase change, there's no change in temperature, so that part's eliminated. Um, the specific heat idea, which is joules per Celsius, is really sort of changing into delta heat of fusion and delta heat of vaporization. Hopefully, it helps kind of summarize our lab. Thanks for watching.